in we are live hi guys welcome for this weekly live stream on the latest news of ethereum and DeFi. i am julian your host and uh, and very so today what we are going to talk about so oh yeah so first of all for those who are new to this so i do this every monday at 10 a.m east coast time so in this video we will talk of andre cronhe because there are a lot of news of the project of andre cronhe we're going to talk of ethereum 2.0 and and many many other stuff it's, there are a lot a lot of news this week super super important uh and uh and also we'll do the q a at the end as usual so if you don't know me i'm julian your host and on my channel in the blocks i teach blockchain development and how to find your first blockchain job and quick reminder this is the last day to take the lifetime all access pass of it the blog so with the lifetime pass you get access to all my blockchain courses both for the courses that already exist and the one that will be released in the future so you pay a one-time fee and you keep access to all the course forever uh, i launched this for black friday last week and today is the last day to get it so you have until today at midnight utc and after it won't be available for enrollment anymore the reason why i have to limit the enrollment is because there is a live teaching component so uh, i have to make sure that not too many people sign up otherwise the class will be too big so hi to everybody in the chat hi thx hi abracadabra hi george cyril jill super cool to see you guys so 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 we're going to start today with the price of ether as usual so uh it was, was very flat this week uh the week before we had a big increase with the deadline for the deposit contract of ethereum 2.0 uh so there was a lot of excitement and after the excitement fell back a little bit so it's possible that some wells decided to dump some eth on the market to accumulate more eth so don't be scared uh, because clearly with ETH 2.0 launching next month, the fundamentals are very good for Ethereum. So everything is fine. Uh, okay, so... Ch -ch -ch. So now let's see the gas prices. So gas prices are pretty flat. So we do have a spike that happened uh, last week. It's the first spike since a while. So yeah i mean very very uh very stable here so next we're going to talk of the situation on ethereum 2.0 so ethereum 2.0 the next version of ethereum is coming next week so last week um we uh we l last week on november 24 there was a very important deadline so we needed to stake 524,000 something ether in the deposit contract in order for ethereum 2.0 to launch if we miss that deadline that means that ethereum 2.0 would have been delayed but we met that deadline so you can see the total stake is 850,000 something so we are way above uh the minimum required to start ethereum 2.0 so of course, uh, that was uh, a very a huge relief for the community because before that, the deposits were a bit slow. Some people were afraid that this wouldn't launch, but finally it launched. Uh, basically, the deposit really accelerated in the last run. So you can still become a validator. This is really a big misconception. A lot of people think that now uh, it's too late. No, um, basically 524,000 was, ju was just the minimum that we needed to meet. But of course, now you can uh, still register to become a validator. And if you're interested in this, check out my video on this. Uh, I think one or two weeks ago, I released a video for how to become a, a validator on Ethereum 2.0. Uh, the big question is how much we can earn because once you lock you lock your 32 ETH, this is locked for a few years, so it better make money. So it does make money when you lock your ether and your validator. So if you want to know how much exactly, uh, so you can check out this website uh, launchpad.ethereum and it gives you a curve with the interest rate you will get according to the total ether that is staked so currently 
we are here so we are at about uh i think about uh yeah 17 percent so still a very healthy rate but yeah as we're going to get more and more ETH stake is going to go down so just to give you some um some overview here so on this chart you can see it goes up to 10 million and uh, and after it sort of plateau it kind of stop at around uh four about five percent yeah 4.9 so in total, we have 113 million of ether in uh, in circulation. So realistically, how what's the percentage of this that can be staked? Yeah, I don't think we're gonna get more than five or ten percent of all the ether stake, and uh, and it's probably going to take some time before we reach that level. So yeah, I mean that can give you some idea of how much uh, you will gain. Okay, so next we're gonna go. Um, so, oh yeah, and of course, so uh, Ethereum 2.0 start tomorrow, uh, December first. That's the, the the Genesis block. Okay, so next on the DeFi market. So this week we have uh, slightly less than uh, last week. Uh, so here it went up because the price of Ether went up. But if we change to Ether we can see that actually we keep losing ether that are locked uh, in DeFi. So I don't really like to see this train, but uh, I mean, that's life. Like sometimes sometime the market goes down. This is, uh, this is not the end of the world. Uh, next, let's see the rates a little bit. So uh, how much money can we earn with rates? So what I like with rate is, is this is one of the easiest way to use DeFi. So if you're a beginner, uh, what, you, what you can do is use your stable coin and lend them on some protocol like a DYDX, Aave, or all Compound. So you can get some really nice rate, like for example, uh, DAI on Aave, 5%, DYDX, 528, USDC, 6.26, that's uh, pretty nice. Uh, yeah, almost like 5% here for Tether on, uh, on Aave. Keep in mind that this is a uh, basically a, a variable rate so it doesn't mean that you are going to lock this rate for the whole year but it change all the time okay so next let's see the DeFi tokens so we have a lot of green this week uh, if you see here the seven day performance we have like some really really nice performance uh, we have a cream token like 32 percent uh, we have a uh, pickle here, so I will explain what happened for pickle uh, and cream. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, Orion protocol. So this is a this is a DeFi project that uh, it's a sort of um, aggregator of DEXs, but across blockchain, and it is also an aggregator of centralized exchange. So this is sort of the ultimate aggregator that get is uh, is liquidity from everywhere so a very very ambitious uh, token uh and and for so for the second week straight we have ieth which is uh, performing like crazy but that's super weird because ieth is inverted ether so ether now is going up so inverted eth should go down so i really really don't understand maybe there is a mistake on a uh, coin gecko because like if you look at the chart it doesn't uh yeah it's not like 600 percent uh at all so yeah it seems like there is a bug here in in con gecko uh and for the loser uh let me see uh saffron finance so it was way up last week because uh, there was some news on the coin market cap so uh the the project went up like crazy but you know after the initial hype it, it fell down but it's it's normal i think saffron finance is a, a very serious project we have a busy x here uh, which is uh, not doing great, and we have any uh, any famous token? Yes, Surf Finance. So that's a that's a fork of a protocol, uh, Balancer, uh, Wi-Fi. Yeah. So yeah, curve. But all in all, we have more green than red this week. Uh, okay, okay. And so after, I'm going to explain. We're going to do a zoom on uh, on Cream and uh, and Pico because there are some important news this week. Okay, so next we're going to switch to the news about the DeFi projects. So first, uh, there is Swap, which is the latest project of Andre Conway. So uh, basically with this project, Andre Conway wants to combine Swap features, options and loans in a single project. So to be clear, 
In DeFi, we use the word swap to mean exchange tokens against another one, but you have to know that in traditional finance, it means something totally different related to rates. So if you're a finance guy, don't be confused when you see swap in uh, DeFi. So for uh, the motivation for this project is to optimize the use of liquidity. So in this article uh, on his medium, Andre explained why he thinks that swap futures option and loans are, are related and what kind of synergy we can have uh, by putting them in the same spot contracts. To be fair, it requires some advanced knowledge in trading to fully understand what he's trying to do here, especially in the field of options, uh, which is something quite difficult. So it's a very, very experimental project, so be very, very careful if you want to invest in this. Uh, if the experiment is successful, it really has the potential to revolutionize uh, most of DeFi products, to be honest. But um, I'm actually a bit skeptical because, um, yeah, it just seems a little bit too complex. Uh, I'm a bit skeptical. But in DeFi, we have the right to do experiment. We should do experiment. So yeah, uh, let let uh, let's let Andre do its experiment. Let's see how it goes. Uh, then we have some news of merger and acquisition in DeFi. So it's the first time that we have that sort of news. Uh, so basically, Yearn Finance is going to merge with a uh, Pickle Finance. So Yearn and uh, Pickle are both yield aggregators. So you send your tokens and the protocol invests the token in other DeFi protocols to make you more money. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, so both of these projects are similar and they're going to merge. So when there is a merger between two companies, in general, the bigger company absorb the smaller one. So the total value locked of Yearn Finance is 433 million and for Pico is 31 million. So um, and also Yearn Finance is the protocol of Andre Conre, which is a developer with an awesome track record in the DeFi ecosystem with many projects. Pickle, on the other hand, is doesn't have such a great track record and was hacked of 20 million very recently. So it only makes sense that it's Yearn Finance that absorb Pickle and not the other way around. So the price of the Pickle token went up a lot after this announcement. However, the price of Yearn Finance went down a bit. So you have to know that it's always like this during a merger. The price of the share of the acquirer goes down a little bit and the, uh, the price of the share of the acquired company goes up. It's always like this. So the actual merger would, uh, occur, will occur when Yearn V2 launches, which is uh, so still currently under development. And the developers of Pickle will keep working on the project by building some strategies for Yearn V2. So they will use the core infrastructure of Yearn in order to build their strategy. And they will earn a 10% performance fee. So if their strategy makes money, they make money. If it doesn't make money, they don't earn anything. And there are also a couple of features that are designed to pay back the victims of the recent hack of uh, Pickle. Okay, so that's the first merger of the week. So then second merger of the week, still involving Yearn Finance. So this time Yearn Finance and Cream Finance. So Cream Finance is a lending protocol like Compan. So Yearn LP token can be used as a collateral in Cream after this merger. So this will increase the liquidity of uh, Cream Finance. And in return, Yearn strategies will get access to leverage through Cream, which can potentially increase the yield of Vault on uh, Yearn Finance. So this was announced on November 26, and uh, at that time, it made the price of the Cream token go up a lot. Then another merger, so <laughs> still with Yearn Finance, this is really crazy. So with the Cover protocol. So Cover is a protocol for DeFi insurance. So at the center of the Cover protocol is a token called Claim. So with the merger, Claim can become a borrowable asset for Yearn and Cover can provide better security by providing some coverage to Yearn Vault. So again, uh, there will be some synergies here. So that's it for the mergers of the week. That is really a lot. Uh, then there is an integration of Yearn Finance with the Argent wallet. So Argent 
is one of the leading Ethereum wallet, especially on mobile. So they use an architecture called a smart contract wallet, which allow them to be a non-custodial wallet. If you never heard of what's a smart contract wallet, you can check my channel. I have a video about this. So with this integration, you will be able to invest in Yuan Finance Vault directly from your Argent wallet. So it's going to bring more liquidity to Yuan Finance. So I'd like to do a little reflection on all these mergers. So I'm really glad to see Andre partnering with uh, other projects. Seems like he start to understand that he cannot do everything on his own. Still, that's really a lot of partnership announced very quickly. It feels a little bit messy to me. So I would still prefer that Andre focuses on one partnership at a time. Um, there is a difference between just building a project like a developer and actually turning it into a product. And it seems like Andre is a great builder, but so far I haven't seen anything that show that he can be a great entrepreneur, that he can actually productize the project he, he works on. So yeah, that's, uh, that's my impression at the moment. But regardless of his skills as an entrepreneur, I've been thinking something else about Andre Grone. So whatever he does always have an impact on the market. So it could be interesting to build a sort of a crypto fund just based on what he publishes on Twitter or on his medium. So you need to react really quickly. And I don't think it's possible to build some AI uh, smart enough to figure out what to do. So the way it could work is if you create a team of like, I don't know, three or four people with different shifts. So there is always somebody awake monitoring the news of Andre Conway. And um, so these guys will have some uh, alert in place, some automatic alert. And as soon as Andre says something on any social media, so right away uh, you analyze what he says and if it has potential impact on a token, then you buy the token very quickly, you keep it a few hours uh, and then you, know, you, you sell it after the hype goes down. So I know it sounds kind of crazy, but uh, it can totally work. Uh, yeah, pretty sure about this. Yeah, but this is a crazy idea. <laughs> um, Okay, so then next news about the Gnosis. So what is Gnosis? So Gnosis is a prediction market. So it allows you to create any sort of bet, but on the blockchain. I actually have a video on Gnosis on my channel if you're interested. Uh, this is pretty interesting project, but also quite complex in terms of the smart contract. And so uh, this week they announced that they are going to decentralize their governance by releasing a DAO. So the governance will be done on a smart contract. And so that's why the price of the Gnosis token went up so much this week. Uh, then next news, so Aave reached a big milestone for Flash Loan. So they've processed over 1 billion in flash loan since they launched in January. So now we hear more and more about flash loan, but for the newbies, you have to know that Aave, this is the protocol that first introduced flash loan. They introduced the ID. Um, so if you don't know what's the flash loan, so very briefly, this is a way to borrow a lot of money on the blockchain without any collateral. And you can use this money to earn more money by doing, for example, arbitrage or liquidations. And um, so, uh, a very a question that comes back a lot is how much you can earn with flash loan well there is this article about liquidations so a lot of this liquidation they use flash loan actually and so here you can see like what were the uh, profit of liquidation uh, from uh, 2018 to January 2020 and so here you can see that we are talking of hundreds of thousands of dollars so it's about like 50 to 100 people who are running this boat uh, in a profitable manner. And here's like the, the profit that they are making. Uh, yeah, so flash on are always like a fascinating t topic for newbies all the time. So still about flash loans. So there is this new project called Flashboat. So this is an sort of uh, open source boat for liquidation and front running. So they want to democratize flash loans so that, um, I mean, uh, liquidation front running with flash loans so that no privileged entity can get all, all the rewards. So they will make this available to everybody. And so in the future, you can use the open source software and uh, to, uh, to find more opportunity. 
Um, so it's quite complementary with Keeper, which is a project released by Andre Conway to create a marketplace of uh, liquidators. So we'll see how far they go. Uh, then, so there was a big event that happened on the DAI market. Uh, so a lot of liquidation on the Compound Protocol. So Compound Protocol, this is a protocol to borrow and lend crypto. And the way it works is you have to provide a collateral. And if your collateral falls below a certain threshold, anybody has the right to reimburse your loan and that person gets a bonus. So that's what we call a liquidation. So Compound uses the oracle of uh, Coinbase to get the price of DAI, but the price of DAI on Coinbase moved a lot at some point last week. So it actually triggered a lot of liquidation on Coinbase, on, uh, on Compound, and a lot of people who borrowed money, they, they, they lost money because of this, so they were, they were quite, uh, they're quite angry. So here you have uh, the founder, the CEO of Compound, which uh, explained different fixes. So first, maybe it could be uh, modifying the, the market parameter for DAI, like the borrowing cap, for example, uh, and also some other ways to modify the Oracle so that uh, it's not so sensitive to, uh, to Coinbase. Yeah, so here with events like this, you can see that uh, with with Oracle, we are we are still a lot of progress to do. We still have some uh, accident like this. is uh, is not perfect. Doesn't work one hundred percent of the time. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Then a news about Filecoin. So Filecoin is uh, is going to offer wrapped Filecoin. So first of all, what is Filecoin? So Filecoin is building a decentralized storage network on top of IPFS, which is uh, itself a decentralized file system. So it's basically a way uh, that, you, uh, that allow you to, to share your file, but uh, in a decentralized way. So Filecoin launched a couple of months ago after many delay, and one key part of the system is the FIL token that allow you to pay for storage space in the network. So Anchorage, which is a crypto custody provider, is partnering with token soft to tokenize FIL token, so the token of Falcon, and this will be done on Ethereum. So it will be similar to wrapped Bitcoin. Uh, we will have wrapped Falcon. So to get some wrapped Falcon, you will have to lock your token, and in exchange, you will get some wrapped Falcon on Ethereum. Uh, and you, o you will also be able to go in the other direction. So this is very important to bring some liquidity to the Filecoin network because there are already a lot of liquidity on Ethereum, but users don't necessarily want to move their asset to uh, another chain. So with this bridge between the two different chain, it can really help Filecoin to take off. Um, next news. So SushiSwap, which is a fork of Uniswap, the most famous uh, decentralized exchange, SushiSwap avoided a hack this week. So there was still $10,000 that were stolen. Um, so the hacker managed to steal this, but the team of SushiSwap was very reactive because they figured out very quickly that something wrong was going on. So, uh, so what's really interesting is how it was resolved. So the team of SushiSwap saw that and they, s they wanted to communicate with the hacker very quickly. So they sent a transaction to the attacker with a message. And in this message, they offered a bug bounty if the attacker returned the money and helped to fix the contract. But I think that what happened in the end is that the team of SushiSwap managed to fix the contract themselves in hours. And so yeah, just $10,000 lost and this will be taken from the trading fees so no, uh, no capital will, lo will be lost for SushiSwap. Uh, yeah, it's interesting this system of uh, bug bounty when a contract is hacked. Uh, this happened a couple of times already where you have the, the, the manager of a project say, okay, hacker, be a nice guy, return the money, we'll, we'll give you a, a reward. Um, yeah, I mean, it can, it can work sometime. Uh, then, so Certic launched an insurance for stolen crypto. So. Certic is a smart contract auditing firm. So they release a new membership service called Certic Shield that offers reimbursement of stolen or lost crypto. So 
Users will receive compensation if the coins get stolen by hackers based on certain reimbursement limits. So to participate in the service, user must provide crypto to a collateral pool. The more you invest in this pool, the more protection you get. This collateral pool will be used to reimburse the stolen coin. So you will earn a fee if you provide your coins to the pool. It will cover crypto tokens across any blockchain network. So it's a very ambitious project. Um, so there's already a multi-chain DeFi lending protocol called Kava, which is the first member of CertiShield. So, but it's not clear if the collateral pool is blockchain based or centralized. So if it's blockchain based, what if this collateral pool get hacked itself? That means the next project we need to do is an insurance for this insurance. <laughs> DeFi never stop guys, never stop. Always get more crazy. Uh, then I wanted to show you this project, Hack Alert. So this is a tool to be notified when there are some hacks and vulnerabilities in DeFi. It can be used to protect your capital or to do some trade. For example, you can short some tokens of protocol that were just hacked. Um, it's a really good example of a simple project that you can do yourself, by the way. It's not very complicated to do that sort of thing. Um, yes. So next, we'll do news for developer. We don't have much news for developer this week. So first, Open, there is a new release of Open Zeppelin, which is uh, a very popular framework for Solidity smart contract. So now it's uh, version V3.3, and they now they support both V6 and uh, Solidity version 6 and 7, but before you had to use a special tag to use Solidity version 7. And it's um, so a very quick update. And next, there is a new release of Ethereum JS. So what is this? This is an implementation of the Ethereum virtual machine implemented in TypeScript, and that is used behind the hood by Ganache, for example. So why is interesting? It's very interesting because you can understand, the uh, if you dive into the code on GitHub, you can understand the core of the logic of Ethereum in a much easier way than if you are trying to read the code of the Go or the Rust implementation of Ethereum. So yeah, that's the big interest of uh, Ethereum JS. Okay, so, 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 uh, I'm going to, uh, oh yeah, let me copy paste the link to the lifetime pass if some people are interested. As I said before, today is the last day to get it. Uh, today at midnight UTC, I will remove it. It won't be available anymore. So let me scroll up in the chat and see if we have any question. So stablecoin.org said, how much uh, cost to run a validator? Let's say I use AWS or other cloud provider. Uh, not much because validators were designed to run on a commodity hardware. So it's not like a, an Ethereum one client where when if you want to do some mining, you need a very powerful machine. For a validator, you can take uh, some very cheap uh, EC2 instance or uh, on a digital ocean. You can just check, take a, a, a cheap machine. You you can you can check out the specification, uh, the the the, rec the minimum recommended specification. It's uh, on the technical documentation of, of Prism. But uh, yeah, I think let me think about it. Uh, I would say to be quite conservative, I don't know between like fifty to one hundred bucks per month. But uh, yeah, I'm quite conservative. It might be less actually. Uh, ch -ch -ch says there is a text to speech program that uses blockchain. It's called 15.ai. Oh, I didn't know that. Interesting. Abracadabra say uh, Okay, I don't I don't understand that one. Uh hi Batman. Hi Aaron. Aaron saying, Hey bro, I have a big doubt about flash on arbitrage bot. If I make a bot and if 400,000 people use it. Will it work? Please, someone help. Um, but you make your, arbitra you, your arbitrage bot, you make it for yourself. So, um, because, yeah, you just you just make it for yourself. The flash loan, you, you deploy it for yourself. So, yeah, flash loan, arbitrage bot, uh, this is a personal thing. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. Okay, okay. Leo is saying... Uh, Okay, okay, let me let me scroll down, scroll down. Other question. Uh Waka said talk about Libra coin. Yeah, I mean Libra that was a project that received a lot of hype uh, like 
But uh, I think two years ago in 2018, when I just launched, that was uh, so crazy because uh, Facebook launched it. But but then quickly, some partners left. I think PayPal left already, and most of the big player. I think Visa left, and um, and also Facebook started to get some pushback from the Congress uh, in the U.S. So yeah, I think most of the hype around the project kind of died, and um, I I don't know. Um, I. I feel like many people don't want it to happen. Like the U.S. government doesn't want this to happen. Uh, Visa, etc., like centralized finance, they also don't want it to happen. It's only Facebook who want it to happen, really. So yeah, not not super bullish on uh, Libra coin, to be honest. Yeah, um, abracadabra, na, na, na. check DeFi Pulse token DPI. I, I don't know that one. Uh, Gary Sen said Bitcoin just went to an all-time high. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah. I mean. So now it seems like we are back to uh, altcoin uh, season. So probably we're going to see more action in uh, altcoin. But uh, yeah, I mean, Bitcoin, uh, f for me, like Bitcoin, this is something you, sh you should keep for several years, really. And uh, you got to be ready for the ride. Yeah, clearly. But I think in the past um, the past few, the past week, we saw some money from Bitcoin, f flowing from Bitcoin to altcoin. And I think it will continue. Uh, Zilpion saying, what will happen when, when ETH2 will be a real thing? Well, the life on the Ethereum network will continue. We'll still have smart contract. DAP is just that it will be much more scalable. So uh, that means that when we'll have the next big bull market with a lot of uh, retail users, we will not have some crazy transaction fees. So the network will still be usable. There won't be any bottlenecks. So finally, we can have a really mainstream adoption. So that's really the big, big, big difference. Uh, uh, abracadabra, I mean, you, you will find it awesome. DPY, okay, okay, thank you. I will check out uh, this project. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Any, any other question, guys? Otherwise, we are going to wrap it up here. Yes, okay, okay, guys. So, yeah, I think this is it for today. So, yeah, thanks for following today, and I will see you later this week for all the videos on eat the blocks have a great day guys bye